I don't know about your God. But the God we're going to sing about can do all things. Can do everything. Everything but fail. Because he's got all power. Yes. All power. So my God can do anything. Anything. Anything.
but tell me. Y'all yeah, know what time it is. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time.
glad. Well, I said I'm so glad so that I'm a man. Yes, sir. And if y'all don't make it, I'm a big. I'm gonna be the other side. Look at <laughs> The song says that millions didn't make it. Well, that's a rock and roll. But I'm so glad that I was one of the ones who did.
this past year. The millions didn't make it. But one of them wasn't me. Then my brother stepped out there and he told the story. After they said that he wasn't going to make it. He said, I made it over. Tonight, praise the Lord. It's coming forth glory to God to, to bless us with the word of God. Pastor Damon Parent from E Church, everybody's church is coming forth at this time. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for the opportunity to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, I'm so glad that you invited me to be your speaker. Amen. Amen. I hope that I can share with you something. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That will find you encouraging this evening. Amen. Put your Bibles in your hands. Hallelujah. I'm going to go uh, to 1 Timothy. Amen. First Timothy. First Timothy, second chapter. When you have it, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The way this works, if you say amen and you will be quick, we'll be home quicker. Amen. I hope to have you home before nine o'clock. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I don't know what's wrong with them. Homeless folks used to pride themselves on three hours, four hour service. Amen. Hallelujah. They act like, why are we out of here for hours? Hallelujah. The preacher needed two for preaching himself. Amen. First Timothy chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. And uh, we're going to read from the King James Version. Amen. It says, I exhort therefore that. First of all, all supplications, somebody say all supplications, all prayers, and intercessions be and giving of thanks be made for all men. Amen. For kings, for all those that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men, somebody say men, men. to be saved. And come into the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom to be testified in due time. And therefore I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, and I speak the truth in Christ and I lie by not 
and a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and variety. Verse number eight is where we're going to highlight our, our thing for the night. It said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. I will therefore that men pray everywhere. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubt. Hallelujah. My message today is come out with your hands up. Father God, in Jesus' name, bless our time together. Yes. Father, donate your word. Give us revelation knowledge. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yes. All God's people say amen. amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come out with your hands. Amen. In this uh, book of First Timothy, we see that Paul is writing to his mentee, Timothy, the pastor. Timothy had been hanging with Paul for 12 years and now Paul had dropped him off. Paul has just now actually been just sprung out of prison. Just made bail. <laughs> Writing the letter to check up on his church. And to give Timothy some vital information on how the church should be structured. And how the church should be ran. And how the church should uh, conduct itself spiritually. And Paul begins to talk and he, he tells him that I, I want you to get the men together. And he says that when in this scripture verse, he's talking about men. Somebody say men. men. I'm talking about males. M-A-E-L. Men. Who are born men. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and he says, I, I therefore want all men to be praying but also people men I want them to also be praying for other men yeah, yeah. Right. that we should leave no man behind come on, come on. on the battlefield of life yeah. on, uncovered without prayer all right. yes, 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 yes. Paul says it's tough out here and even though we're living this world and we're, we're in the world but we're not of the world and not, we're not of this kingdom, we have a heavenly kingdom, but while we're on this world, I need you to pray for every man. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all right. seen that show on Guns and all other shows that when the cop is under fire, he tells somebody, come on. I don't know about you, but who you got covering you? I'm talking about who you know that knows the words of prayer that's actually covering you. Because the fact is, is we're coming to a, a place in 2016. I would like to say that the state of men in the church is bad. Uh, the African American church experiences a phenomenon that 70% of our churches are made up of women. Yeah. Even white men go to church more often than black men And even Muslims have a higher rate of men going to the mosque and praying Even the Jewish men have a higher rate of people going to the temple and to the synagogue and praying than black men uh -huh. And all oh, my heart breaks because every time I see somebody I say that's a man that needs to be in church uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, see, the thing is, see, uh, we can't be all that we are called to be without my brother catching up into the sanctuary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, many times we talk about what's going on down the street, but we're not talking about what's going on in the church. Because if the churchmen were strong, a lot of the stuff that was going, that was, that's going on would not be going on. Somebody say amen. amen. Paul says, I need some men of power and I need some men of prayer. That's why I'm excited about y'all getting together on Friday night. Yeah, 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 yeah. We ain't getting together for bowling, we're getting together for prayer. Yeah, right. The Bible says men ought to always pray and not faint. Yeah. Prayer being the communication with God, where God's spirit matches with ours. Our mind is illuminated, scriptures are revealed, our mind is changed, and people are Superman. I, I may have went in as Clark Kent, but I came out like 
Jesus. Well, maybe he maybe he's for the gay people because the church folk ain't praying for him. Jesus. Paul says, if we want to live a peaceable well, and quiet life uh, and not be worried about the bathroom. Do you really, really want the open door? Have you prayed your way? 
to the open door. Hallelujah. 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 Let me not. That's your name. <sighs> Jesus. Jesus. The Bible says, for this is good and acceptable to say about Lord our Savior, who would have all men. Somebody say all men. All men. To be saved. <laughs> if men don't pray, men can't get saved. So maybe we're not seeing people get saved because we ain't praying that men get saved. Maybe we ain't praying that people get filled with the Holy Ghost. Because one thing I, 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 I always be messing up. I always stick my foot in my mouth. And I got a bad habit of that. But I, 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 I try to do my best. I do my best. <laughs> You know, I gotta watch what I say because there's an inner danger that my family don't want to get out. And it's a struggle. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a real struggle. My wife is like the Holy Spirit number two. She's like, kill that, don't do that. You're hurting the brain, you're hurting the brain, don't do that. If y'all would just understand some of the stuff that come out my mind and what I think, y'all would really be shocked. What I'm gonna say this to you the prosperity gospel has lulled us to sleep. I believe in prosperity. I, I preach prosperity. But prosperity out of focus is idolatry. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And all these things that the Gentiles seek shall be automatically added unto you. So if I just keep my eyes on Jesus, everything else that I want is going to come to me. So not that I just pray, God, I'm praying for this 5,000 square foot house. God, I thank you in advance that it got six bedrooms, it got a deck on the back, it got a three-car garage, and it got a pool. And God, we live in a good neighborhood, and our kids can leave their doors open at night. And God, we thank you for our new BMW, and we thank you for our new business, and we thank you for our vacation, and we thank you. And when your prayer life is like that, you ain't never praying for nobody else. That's why when prosperity has always snuffed out me by. Because folk, if it ain't thinking about them, their own material needs, they can't think, they, 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 not, they don't want to think about sin. Because God, if you, if you give me some stuff, it will show that you're pleased with my life. But what I'm talking about, what God wants you to do is give me your sin. He wants you to kill that thing. He wants you to fortify the deeds of the flesh. And then all the other stuff that you want won't come. Everything else you want won't come. Yeah. And when you stuck on prosperity, right. you can't pray for nobody. Right. When you stuck on pro prosperity, all you care about is what you got. All you care about is your tailor made suits. You ain't never put a tailor made suit on somebody who couldn't give you one back. Jesus said, if you only can do good for those who knew, who, who can do good back to you, then what good is your faith? Yeah. I take you to dinner door next time you got it. God said, get that church member who don't have it. Who probably nine times out of ten ain't going to have it next time you see it. And probably nine times out of ten a year from now, he may not have it then. But still take him to dinner. Are we going on a ministry? You know he can't afford Jesus. Put 
put the five guys on the list and call that name out to everyone I'll be coming in the house of God. The reason why both times they change is because there ain't no prayer. Change their lives. Not to hit their lives. Now y'all say, Pastor, you bring him in here. He talking about all this other stuff, but I feel like <laughs> shut my mouth. Shut my mouth. Put my glasses on and keep on going. I got some Chipotle waiting. I'm gonna go get it. Hang it all day. Hang it all day. Hallelujah. The Bible says, "Do we have all men to be saved? For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus." Somebody said, "There's only one way." Good Lord, there's so many stupid people in the world. I told him one time, I'm saying it as a joke, don't, don't, don't hold it against me and invite me back. But I said, they should have never gave them Negroes Periscope. You too. Because now everybody got a preaching platform. And they think they called. And they tested. And they think they got a way around the prayer pastor. Somebody say amen. amen. Just because you can FaceTime, just because you can add Facebook Live, just because you can Periscope, just because you can YouTube, don't mean you're right. That's right. That's right. Because what happened was when Paul was writing to Timothy, he said, Timothy, I, I need you to get some stuff right. Because there's some false teachers at the church that you asked about. These jokers was in the church. Men, and we, we, we are, we, we, we're built for significance. We want significance. If you say you're a rare skin fan, somebody gonna jump up and say, I'm Dallas. Kind of boy, what's going on? Come on. I'm a Raiders fan. We want, we want to try to signify. We want, want to be significant. Somebody asks you how much a tie costs. You're like, you trying to go low? Or you trying to go high? Because if I say it too low, he's going to say, oh, that's a cheap tie. Well, if, I say, if I say it's too high, he's going to say, you pay too much for it. So you're not trying to say, what am I saying? Men like significance. And a woman go oh, and get a man's wallet every time when she can tap into making him feel significant. Y'all ladies are just go ahead and put some money on that community table for me right there. You don't know how I talk to a man. The Bible says Sarah called Abraham Lord. And all of a sudden saying Lord a couple times made him do stuff that he couldn't use. belongs to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The fact is, these men, the Bible says they denied key doctrinal truths. They were, the other problem was, they were telling people that there is no such thing as a resurrection. There's no such thing as, uh, uh, you know, life after death. Jesus didn't rise from the dead. Paul said, if we, if Christ be not raised from the dead, we are men most Miserable. I hope it's in, in, in vain. Then they were talking about they were having disputes. They were having strife in the church. Beef in the church. Strife with each other. These false preachers weren't from the outside. They were from the inside. Disgruntled folk. Y'all, y'all, I don't know if y'all know it or not, but if you on Facebook any length of time in your life, you will see that there are a whole bunch of disgruntled men yeah. on Facebook. Uh -huh. <laughs> Talking about the tithes was never money. Talking about is, is it biblical to pay tithes or not. When you were going to the strip club, you had no problem cashing your check and telling that girl, say, make it all woman's bank teller. <laughs> Because God don't like the stuff that they like. 
ain't funny like me. Did he really say that? <laughs> Girl, that's, how, that's how I know you're caught up in the game. Go. Sanitize hands. 
somebody when they put their hands up all by themselves. Yes. How many ever had the moments where God had to put you had to put your hands up in your own house? You put your hands up in the car. You put your hands up everywhere you at. You just put your hands up. The thing is, to put your hands up means I surrender. And when you surrender, when 
See, I got my hands up. I'm surrendering to you. That means I'm also yielding to your direction. God, we are the we are the people to usher in the revival of God. There has never been a revival under the sun that has not been orchestrated. Oh God, called men to bring it in. In yes. Isaiah chapter, I believe it is three. Isaiah chapter three, uh, the Bible says that the sign of the sure sign of God's judgment was all the men were out of place. He said, where are you not men of war? Where are your prophets? Where are your teachers? Where are your scribes? Where are all of them? Where are your prophets? He said, they are none, but I have taken them as a sign of judgment. Saints, men of each church, men of uh, true deliverance, amen, let us not be said that there are no men in the house. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, come on now, somebody. Come on now, somebody. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not discounting women, but Paul, Paul is real specific about men because let me let, let me let me let me get you on a real good secret that I know y'all may not like or may not want to understand, but men get men. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Men make men. Uh, somebody say amen. amen. And the problem is. We got too many other folks trying to make men. And the kind of men they make ain't men. They may have the genitalia, but they ain't got the mind or the spirit of a man. They ain't conditioned, mighty love. The God is mighty quiet. <laughs> Holy hands, y'all don't mind if I get some water, y'all. Y'all work with somebody. Holy hands. He said, I need people to have holy hands without wrath, without anger, without doubt, without no contention. I need you to be in the world, but not be of the world. And not act like them. Because if you act like them, you'll get what they get. What he said, this is what he said. Because they were, the church was in the city called Ephesus. And the city of Ephesus was a world-renowned, at that ancient time, was a world-renowned temple called the Temple of Ar Armatius. Right. Yeah. Or rather, what it's called, the Temple of Diana. Yeah. Y'all know that, right? Yeah. It was a place where men went to worship. And when they worshiped, and men, men and women too, they worshiped. They had, they had parties. And at these kind of parties, everything went. Y'all read between lines. Yeah. But they had worship through sex. Yeah. <coughs> and somebody say amen. amen. They had worship through sex. Yeah. And the, the goddess Diana was in charge of it. So it was a place where men traded their manhood <coughs> for satisfaction. It was a place that it was also a temptation for women in Paul's church because they, the women wanted to have game like that. Oh, <laughs> Woo! So the women said, I want the power. Mm, yeah. And the guy says, I want the lust. Yeah. Woo! Right. And they tempted the band all around the neighborhood. Well, every time she said, I want to, they worshiping at that temple. When she uses her sexual provocativeness for her power, dirty day. Somebody say amen. And when he trains himself as an adulterer or to the hunter of souls, as the Bible said, the Bible says the adulterer, the adulteress is the hunter of souls who seeks to snatch. So, and stuff your very life out of you. Yes, yes. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Lord. And here we are. Everybody want to be sexually, sexually provocative. 
Mm -hmm. Am I sexy? Mm -hmm. Or are you God? Uh, well, well, yeah. well, yeah. well, yeah. well, yeah. I'm going to tell y'all a secret, ladies. I'm going to tell you this while I'm looking this way. Men marry godly over sexy any day. Y'all ain't want to hear that. Y'all want to hear that? You can drive it like it's hot and pick it up like it's not. But let me tell you something. Amen. I'm trying to tell you he ain't married to lose goose. Y'all know what this guy is out there. They want. They don't want the. Nobody wants the woman that ain't never been kissed, but they don't want the woman that kissed everybody. Somebody say amen. amen. You like, woo, this don't feel 
the way I want it to feel. Right. That's because you've been married to a couple of people.
from <laughs> putting them leftovers. <laughs> want somebody that know how to cook, that know how to pray with us. I'm going to go. My time is up. I miss the rest of this stuff. Hallelujah. But I, I pray that as men, these are my three points, <clears throat> that God is looking for pure men. He's looking for powerful men. And all these men come from prayer. Yeah. I found it very encouraging that you host your men's day on Pentecost. Yeah. 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 Y'all, we so used to people doing stuff wrong. When we hear right, we get offended. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't care if I did mess up. My job is to preach the responsibility of what God's word say. Yes. Somebody say, they say, well, you wasn't perfect. I ain't got to be perfect. I got to teach you what's perfect. Yeah. I had an eight summit at my church, and they said, well, Pastor, we need to be able to tell people that they got to be able to put on condoms. Well, I was like, and we have a problem getting other churches to help us <coughs> teach that. I said, of course. Our boss, man, don't, don't teach that. I can't let you preach or teach something that the boss don't advocate. Somebody say amen. amen. I can't teach you how to sin smart. <laughs> even if you sin smart, I told church today, even if you sin smart, it still got a stupid tax. Come on there, somebody. Yeah. When we hold up to what God wants. Yeah. When we get a hold to the horns of the altar. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Come on there, somebody. Yeah. And I'm not just calling up. Well, y'all want to quote that scripture? Call for the willing women. Yeah, women got that natural intuition to jump into the spiritual things and, and the provision and security because that's how they naturally wise. But God also called for the faithful men. Yeah. But then everything I'm teaching you today. Jesus. Oh, 